Hello everyone, this is your tutor AB. Today we're going to be solving a problem from the May 2022 IB Physics examinations. This is an SL paper 2 question and it's open ended. Let's get started. This is an electric circuits question. Topic B. A power supply is connected to three circuit, three resistors, P, Q and R, of fixed value and to an ideal voltmeter. A variable resistor S formed from a solid cylinder of conducting putty is also connected in the circuit. Conducting putty is a material that can be molded so that the resistance of S can be changed by reshaping it. So the resistance values of P, Q and R are 40, 16 and 60 ohms respectively. The EMF electromotive force of the power supply is 6 volts and its internal re resistance is negligible. Part A. Calculate the potential difference across P. Now, how do we do this? Well, before we get started, let's just analyze what's going on. Right, this is a circuit and this cell outputs some current. So this current travels across the circuit in the direction of the positive terminal and eventually enters this parallel branch in which it splits into two currents like that, like so. These two currents, the sum of them is equal to the original current, but when we can use Kirchhoff's law to understand this better, but that won't be necessary. So it splits into two currents, one entering this branch and one entering the other branch. Now using the equation V is equal to IR, we can actually find out what is this current that is passing through this particular branch. Right, this is essentially Ohm's law. Using Ohm's law, we can find out how much current is passing through this branch. And this is important as you will see now. So first we know that the overall circuit has a EMF or potential difference of 6 volts. Now what exactly does that mean? Let me erase these things. It means that this branch has a potential difference of 6 volts and this branch altogether also has a potential difference of 6 volts. Both of them have 6 volts as it's a parallel circuit, right? The potential difference must be equal at all points. Now, how shall we solve this? Well, we know that the total resistance across this top branch is 100 ohms. Now, using V is equal to IR, right? V is equal to IR, I can say that as there is a potential difference across this top branch of 6, 6 over R, which is the total resistance of this top branch, 100 ohms, would give me I. So I is actually equal to 0 0.06 amperes, but that's not the question. They're asking me the potential difference across P. Now, the good thing is, since I know how much current is passing through this branch, I also know that the same current passes through P and R. So 40 amp, uh, not 40, 0 0.06 amperes is passing through P and it's also passing through R, the same current. So we know the resistance and we know the current passing through this resistor. With this, we can now find out what is the voltage drop or the potential difference across this resistor using V is equal to IR. So now we know that I 0 0.06 times the resistance of 40 amp ohms should give me the potential drop. So V is equal to putting this in the calculator 2.4 volts. 2.4 volts is the potential difference across P. Now they're asking that the voltmeter reads zero, determine the resistance of S. And S of course is our variable resistor. Now how do we do this, right? It's variable, it's always changing, but that's a key information that they gave. The voltmeter reads zero. And also keep in mind that this is an ideal voltmeter, meaning it has infinite resistance meaning we don't need to worry about external calculations. Voltmeter reads zero. What does this mean? It means that the potential difference across the top branch and bottom branch is zero, meaning the top branch is the same and the bottom branch is the same. And if I minus them, I get zero. Hence, I know 
that because p is 2.4 what is r well it has to add up to 6 right 2.4 plus something is equal to 6 so the potential difference across r pe across not pe potential difference pd across r is 2.4 so it's 3.6 volts right because it's essentially 6 minus 2.4 so we know that's 3.6 volts and that's not what they're asking though they're asking the resistance of s now how do we find this because we know that the uh, what's it called? The, the potential difference across the top branch and bottom branch is equal. We know that if this is 3.6 volts, the potential difference across S is also 3.6 volts. And because P is 2.4 volts, the potential difference across Q is also 2.4 volts. Right? This is the beauty of the ideal voltmeter. It reads zero. So we can hence assure that there is the same potential difference across the branches, meaning directly in parallel so now knowing that there is a 2.4 volt resistance uh, i mean potential difference across the 16 ohm resistor i can find out what is the current that passes through q so to find that i can say use the equation ohm's law v is equal to ir where v of course is equal to 2.4 volts 2.4 divided by resistance of q which is 16 gives me the current that's passing through Q. 2.4 divided by 16, meaning I'm getting 0 0.15 amperes. That's how much current is passing through 16. And because S is right next to it, it doesn't get split up anywhere. S also receives the same amount of current. S also receives 0 0.15 amperes, right? It's in a straight line like so. It also receives 0 0.15 amperes and I know that the potential difference across X is S is 3.6 volts so again using the Ohm's law I can say that V is equal to IR so the voltage difference potential difference across S is 3.6 because of our reading on the ideal voltmeter divided by the current that passes through S 0 0.15 amperes that must give me resistance so putting this in my calculator i get 24 24 ohms that is the resistance of this variable resistor in this particular case now just to sum up what i did we know the voltmeter reads zero meaning the potential difference across the top branch and the bottom branch must be the same and because at both these points is zero we know that 2.4 directly reflects underneath to the 16 ohms so that also has a diff potential difference of 2.4 and 3.6 volts which is r directly reflects onto the variable resistors potential difference making giving that also a potential difference of 3.6 volts using this i found the current current passing through q and s is the same and hence i was able to find the potential difference across uh, not potential difference the resistance across s okay now all this putty is reshaped into a solid cylinder that is four times the longer than the original length reduce the resistance of this new cylinder when it's reshaped now in your data booklets right you have an equation which is resistivity p is equal to r resistance a cross-sectional area over length now can we not use this formula from your formula booklet to solve this problem now i've done this technique many times if you've seen my uh, fields videos right gravitational fields electric fields is the dividing technique now i'll show you how i implement it in this situation well if i rearrange this formula I need to know the resistance so I know that resistance is equal to resistivity times length times divided by cross-sectional area right this is our uh, this is our formula just rearranged now I know that resistance 2 is actually equal to the resistivity of the material which is stem of course times the length of the material which is four times longer than the original so we call this times 4l 
divided by now the cross-sectional area. And one thing to keep in mind is that because the length became longer, the area must become shorter. And I'll tell you why. We can say generally that the area times the length gives me volume, right? The volume of this particular putty must stay the same. Now, if I increase the length by four times, right? If this becomes four times, the volume also increases, but I need to keep volume consistent. So I need to offset this change in length by decreasing the cross-sectional area, meaning it should become a divided by four. Right, in this case, it both cancels out and volume does stay the same. So, this new resistance putty actually has a cross-sectional area of A by 4. That's R2. And I know R1, of course, is just the original, which is resistivity L over A. Now, if I divide them, right, R2 over R1 must be equal to P 4PL times 4 over a times a over pl right cancels cancels a cancels cancels and we get r2 is equal to 16 times r1 16 times the resistance one now what is the original resistance of this putty well i calculated that before that was 24 ohms so if i do substitute that into the equation 16 times 24 you will get points of course if you do an error carry forward but this is the process times 24 you get 384 ohms that is the resistance of this new shape variable resistor now last question outlined without calculation the change in the total power dissipated in Q and the new cylinder after it has been reshaped. See now we don't want to do any calculation we want to solve this purely based on theory. Well how will we solve this then? Well we need to understand that de we're dealing with power and power of course has the formula P is equal to I square R. There are different variations but this is the formula I want to work with in this case P is equal to I square R. Now, what I can tell is that power is directly proportional to both the resistance and the current. Now, what I need to understand is that I am saving that the total power, power has decreased. And the reason total power has decreased is because right the total reason total power is decreased is because the current in the branch right the current in the branch has, has decreased the current in the branch has decreased and the reason it's decreased is because of course we know we know that the overall resistance of the circuit has actually increased. So we can use the inverse argument that because resistance increased, the current decreased and because the current decreased, that directly plays a role in this equation. And so power decreased as well. Okay, so thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please leave it down below and I will answer it in the comments. Thank you.